What is going on, my family? Your boy is back, coming at y'all with some real shit. And here, you know, your boy couldn't sleep. It's late at night or early in the morning, however y'all want to put it. It's in the a.m. hour, so that's like early in the morning. Your boy couldn't sleep, so I just, I guess I figure I'll just come on here and talk a little bit of shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, You know, make y'all laugh, make y'all think about some shit or whatever. You feel what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, this, this is going to be just me talking that shit. So, yeah, this past, this past weekend, you know, we had a lot of shit going down. We had this whole uh, football weekend. This shit was fucking disastrous. Depending on who you went for, it was disastrous. The teams that I wanted to go to the Super Bowl, they fucking failed. They was trash at doing it. It was just really pathetic. But uh, it is what it is. Shit, it is what it is. So basically, you know, we had the football games. We had Kansas City, Cincinnati. Then we had the 49ers. And the St. Louis Rams. Now, with the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals, that fucking game, oh my God. After that, I'm done with the Kansas City Chiefs. I am done with that football team. That fucking football team is lazy. And it's time to blow them motherfuckers up. It's time to blow them motherfuckers up. Start over from scratch. They defense is garbage. The secondary is fucking garbage. Cincinnati got one of the worst offensive lines in the game. They couldn't get the quarterback. They could not get after the fucking quarterback. That is a trash-ass defense right there. And then the defense, as trash as they are, gave up at the end of the fucking game. It's time to blow them motherfuckers up, man. And Patrick Mahomes, for some strange reason, Patrick Mahomes had a Super Bowl of last year moment. He running backwards instead of forwards. I don't know what the fuck going on there. In the regular season and all these other playoff games, you know to run forward, but then he starts running backwards when it mattered. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like I said, in Kansas City, it's just time to blow them up. They lazy, and they starting to get derivative, and right now they're starting to get a little predictable. It's time to blow them motherfuckers up. I'll just keep, keep Patrick Mahomes, keep Travis Kelsey, keep Tyreek Hill. Everybody else is fair game. Put the motherfuckers on the market. Even uh, Edwards Elaire, I love that dude as a running back, but he just gets hurt every game. It seems like Edwards Elaire gets hurt every fucking game. So yeah, it's time to blow that team up. And yeah, but like I said, I'm just I'm done with Kansas City, and the reason for it is they underachieving right now. They should be a dynasty right now, and shit just ain't going down. One Super Bowl just ain't enough. It just ain't enough. They've been there so many times, and they just ain't getting the job done. They starting to look like the Green Bay Packers, for real. <clears throat> so the second game here, because I'm a 49ers fan, big 49ers fan from a franchise standpoint. You know, I'm a fan of Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Steve Young, Ricky Waters. So, you know, huge 49ers fan. And I was really rooting for the 49ers to pull this out. I was telling people 49ers was going to take it uh, when the playoffs started. Because of their defense, I always thought if the 49ers would at least get to the Super Bowl, it was going to be because of their defense, not their offense. But, uh, you know, it was just really sad and it was fucked up because the 49ers, they did play their hearts out. And it's just fucked up how they coach Kyle overrated, conservative ass Shanahan left them out on the fucking hook. Uh, they, you know, Kyle Shanahan let his team down with his conservative ass fucking coaching. Like I said, I'm just, I was never a fan of Kyle Shanahan. I never was a fan of him. He is, he, he's so fucking conservative. I cannot stand those type of coaches where they want to be conservative, super safe, and they don't play to win the game. It's almost like they play, they, they play not to lose. Instead of just going out there, getting it, going out there and taking it. Kyle Shanahan just disgusts me. I, it's, it's time for him to go. He needs to be fucking fired. And the bad part about it is somebody, he going to get a job somewhere else because of his last name. He's the son of a legend. But uh, Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan got to go. I'm just tired of conservative football. Why in the fuck would you take your offense out of the game on fourth and two? St. Louis Rams failed at a challenge. The St. Louis Rams ain't got no fucking timeouts. You bring the offense back on the field only to not go for it. 
Man, I'm just like y'all remember that that y'all remember that segment back in the day where they had, you know, come on man. That was a come on man moment. I could just I could just see Keyshawn Johnson right now, like, what? Kyle Shanahan, come on, man. I was thinking that. That's exactly what I was thinking. I know y'all remember that segment. When I saw that shit and the 49ers didn't go for it, I was like, come on, man. I was like, man. 49ers lost that game off of that play. Now, a lot of people was like, well, you know, the defender dropped the interception pass. Jimmy Garoppolo lost the game for him. But all of that shit happened after that when they did not go for it on fourth and two. 49ers just completely melt, melted down after that shit. They lost the game off of that. Because my thing is, Saint Lu the Rams had no timeouts. So even if St. Louis would have stopped the 49ers from getting that first down the clock would have continued to run but uh oh good old kyle shanahan you conservative motherfucker i just hope he gets fired man i just hope he gets fired but yeah man that was the that was the football talk right there man it was just really disgusting it's gonna be one boring ass fucking super bowl i know that much i don't know how the ratings gonna go but it's going to be one boring ass fucking Super Bowl. The halftime show ain't really going to be shit either because you got Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar, Mary J. Blige and Eminem. And, you know, I do not like Eminem. Eminem probably going to make that shit all about his damn self. Man, I ain't even going to tune in for that damn Super Bowl. If they took Eminem out that motherfucker, I'll tune in. But they put Eminem in that motherfucker. I don't even give a fuck. He gonna make it all about himself and who fucking cares shit but shout out to the rest of them shout out to dr dre mary j blige kendrick lamar but uh fuck eminem for real so other shit that was been going on we all know about that whole janet jackson uh documentary yeah you know a lot of people been tuning in for that uh i went ahead and tuned in and watched it um it started out the same the same way pretty much every Jackson documentary start out. You know, they always start from Gary, Indiana. They talk about Joe and Catherine, you know, Joe working at the steel mill, Catherine being working at a, a pretty much like a, a, a market, you know. So it started out pretty much, you know, as usual, usual Jackson, Jackson style and, you know, telling it from Janet's perspective, which was pretty cool. Um. I will have to say this, though, the main reason why I tuned in and I'm telling y'all right now, the main reason why a lot of people tuned in to this shit is because motherfuckers really wanted to know what really happened between Janet and James DeBarge. That's what people really want to know. I wanted to see if Jan Janet was just going to come out with some shit, you know, like shed some light on what happened because it was so secretive. We all knew they were together. They got married. But what happened? Like, what, just tell us what happened. And, you know, Janet was pretty blunt about a lot of shit. You know, of course, we already figured, you know, she came out. I was like, well, James did drugs. I mean, of course, he's at the bar. Just, that's all they knew. <laughs> that's all they fucking knew. We knew that. But I was thinking Janet was going to say something about that secret baby shit and all of that. And, you know what I'm saying? There, there was a rumor that it was like. Michael Jackson actually went to James and Barr and said, if you hurt my sister, I'm going to kill you. Like, for real, I'm like, Michael Jackson said that shit? I'm like, I swear, I'll be telling you, Michael, will, Michael Jackson will motherfucker's ass. I'm telling you, I, I believe that Michael Jackson said that shit, but Janet didn't clarify that. I don't even think she talked about it, but I could see Michael Jackson. <laughs> I could see Michael Jackson telling somebody something like that. <laughs> you hurt my sister. I'm going to whoop your ass. I'll tell but Michael Jackson looked like he could whoop somebody ass. I'm telling you, that man, we that man didn't play. I don't give a fuck nobody say. He he that man didn't play. He looked like he packed a mean punch. You see his kicks and his punches on stage? The way he do that kick, he'd knock a motherfucker out, man, for real. But yeah, the documentary for Janet Jackson, man, that shit was pretty cool. There ain't nothing to complain about. She didn't really say nothing controversial. You know, she defended Justin Timberlake and shit, you know, uh, you know, rightfully so. But I, I'm so over that incident. Like it, it, it happened. It was either a wardrobe malfunction or, 
you know, it was just a it was a surprise. I, I liked it. I liked what I saw when that shit happened. I don't know why people are trying to tear Janet down for that shit. Because I liked it. I don't give a fuck. So, uh, yeah, we had that Janet Jackson thing. So that was pretty cool. And you know what, though? It was kind of funny because watching that documentary, you know, uh, there's a sports YouTuber uh, named Ticket TV. I watch him all the time. Shout out to Ticket TV. Man, love that dude. Watch him all the time. That's, he's the realest sports channel in the world, man. Ticket TV gives it to you raw, real, uncut. And he don't take no shit either. It just reminds me because, you know, whenever a troll come on Ticket TV stream, shit, he'll call him Janet Jackass. <laughs> it just made me just think about that, that, you know, Ticket TV, he'll call a troll Janet Jackass. Like, so a lot of parts in that documentary, documentary, it just made me think of Ticket TV when he'll call troll that. <laughs> He'd be like, get the fuck out of here, Janet Jackass. <laughs> so, yeah, that shit was funny. Like I said, man, shout out to Ticket TV. If y'all curious to know who Ticket TV is, just go to his YouTube channel, Ticket TV. Realest basketball shit over there, man. He gives it to you real, raw, and uncut for real. So, uh, yeah. So, the football shit we got. The Janet shit we got. And now, you know, it's just another start of the week for a lot of us. You know, getting back to that nine to five and shit like that. I do want to talk about a couple other shit, you know, uh, uh, concerning my YouTube channel. Because, you know, it's getting to the point, man. I'm just starting to say, fuck it. I'm just going to upload whatever now. You know, I'm still going to be doing my shit. I'm still going to be giving y'all the, the Virtual Fighter, the tech and content. You know, other things that I'm into, you know, the gaming, real talk shit. I'm still going to give y'all all of that. But I just want to just, I, I just want to just transcend. Y'all feel what I'm saying? And I, I just, I got my niche. My niche is there. Y'all feel what I'm saying? But, you know, I want to do the other, some other shit. You know, starting with this talking shit series right here. So this is kind of like episode one. I'm just going to be over here just. You know, just 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 talking shit, real shit, funny shit. You know what I'm saying? But you know, just talking that shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so that's what I'm doing here. But as far as my YouTube channel and like my content, like I said, you know, I got a catering business. So um, you know, a lot of us are getting back to work after this whole COVID shit. You know what I'm saying? Even though we still in it, but motherfuckers are going back to work. So. It's like really like by the time I get back home, I really only got like a four or five hour window before I got to take my ass back to bed again. So it's been kind of tough for me to make um, deeper content. You know what I'm saying? I know I've been giving y'all a lot of classic gameplay, gameplay uploads. Um, because, Well, the reason for that is, is because, you know, man, the time is hard right now. It's like I'm really trying to find time to finish a lot of other projects i got going on i like i got a mortal Kombat project going on i got a a, a deep tekken project going on uh, i got this vf6 uh video coming out you know this whole thing with vf6 and you know i'm just gonna be talking about how vf5 ultimate showdown is a success it is not a failure and the game ain't dead because this is all i'm fucking hearing over the internet and I'm sick of the shit. I'm sick of I'm sick of the word failure being put next to Virtua Fighter. I'm sick of it. Virtua Fighter is never and will never be a failure. The game opened up the door for other motherfuckers to create games such as Tekken, Soul Calibur, all these other games. Motherfuckers need to shut up with that failure and that dead shit. For real. Without this game... You probably wouldn't have your other favorite fighting game. Let's just keep that real. So I got that project in the works. This is just a matter of time before I can get it done because, you know, my windows, my windows of time is very, very, very short, very low. And, you know, I've been I've been getting a lot of fight requests, too, and I, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying to really, you know, you know, bunch it all in. So, you know. So for those of y'all that been wanting fight requests, I ain't forgot about y'all. I'm just, I'm really just trying to, uh, 
trying to figure some stuff out when it's when it comes to this time because you know, like you said, man, I got my catering career going on. And I got my, you know, I do noveling too. So when uh, when I'm not doing content, I'm doing novels. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get a couple of novels published right now. So your boy is your boy is doing some big shit right now. You know, I'm really trying to get these novels published out here. You know what I'm saying? They being looked at by some develop some publishers right now. And, you know, I've been talking and uh you know, just hope the best for me. If it don't work out, I'm just still going to continue to push, you know, until I break through. Y'all feel what I'm saying? And I also got some, uh, got some, a couple of Marvel projects uh, in the works too. And uh, one of those projects is kind of going to be like a what if, kind of like the Marvel's what if series. So that's what I'm really going to be basing most of my Marvel content on, kind of like what if type of shit and stuff like that until... They bring the good games out like the Spider-Man 2 and the Wolverine and hopefully the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 if they're going to re, uh, re-release that game. We ain't really heard nothing from it, but uh, yeah, I got a, uh, a project underway. Basically, it's kind of like a what if a Spider-Man fighting game would surface. You feel what I'm saying? Because, you know, we've seen an X-Men fighting game. I ain't talking about Marvel versus Capcom shit. I'm talking about a general. You've seen a general X-Men fighting game before. So I kind of feel like, you know, a Spider-Man fighting game would be some sick shit. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, I got a project. That project is underway. You know, it's just... uh, it's just gonna be a matter of time for your boy can get all of those projects done. Like I said, it's just like my time window is very short right now because your boy is just doing some big, big things out here. You know what I'm saying? And I like to, uh, <clears throat> I want to thank my entire family. If y'all notice, I don't say followers. I don't use the word subscribers. I say family because you know, uh, without y'all. There is no D all the way G. There is no C money. So, man, I thank y'all, my family, for supporting me, uh, being there for me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't like these other YouTubers out here. The first thing the first thing they say when they video come on, uh, donate to me. Man, fuck all of that shit. I would never ask y'all for y'all money. I would never do that. This is not the reason why I came to YouTube is to always to ask people for donation money. And there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are like that, like literally will beg you before the video even fucking starts for donation money. That's just crazy, man. Fuck all this shit. That's not why I'm here, family. I'm here to entertain, educate, create excitement and, you know, you know, shit like that and make people laugh and all of that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what YouTube is. That's what YouTube is really all about. You feel what I'm saying? You know? Even if I had a super uh, super chat, man, I I wouldn't, you know, I, I I'm I'm just not like that. I'm not the type to, I'm just not the type to get on a fucking platform and beg for donation money. I just can't. I just I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to do no shit like that. I just couldn't. Like I said, you got some YouTubers out here, boy. I swear to God, the deep boy. And not only that, if you go to a lot of these YouTubers channels, they will have that shit in the description box. Be like, please donate to me. I'm like, damn, like you say it in the video, then you got in the description box and then they put it in the comment sections and every damn thing. I'm like, damn, boy, I don't even think these fucking homeless motherfuckers out here beg that damn much. They'll just hold a sign up and that's it. They don't fucking you know, try to go on the internet and do all that, all that fucking shit. Y'all feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just wanted to just say say that. But like I said, I thank y'all all, man, for this. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, we just going to keep the action going. We going to keep the ball rolling and shit like that. You know, like I said, I'm still going to be giving y'all the usual shit. And like I said, I'm working on all of these projects. I I got like 11 projects in the works right now. It's just like I'm kind of uh, I'm battling myself on which projects to kind of get done first. But like first and foremost, I'm really trying to get this this VF6. I'm, I want to talk about this whole thing with the, the a possible VF6 coming out. I, I really want to get that done first. But like I said, I got a lot of uh, deep projects going 
And I've been giving y'all uh, exciting gameplay, gameplay videos, you know, um, and I know a lot of y'all and I know a lot of y'all enjoy that shit. You know, I, I enjoy it, too, because, you know, both of those two games, I enjoy playing, you know, VF5, Ultimate Showdown and Tekken 7. You know, I enjoy playing those games to the fullest. I'm, I'm competitive in those games. I play competitively. You know, in those games, if, if COVID wasn't here, your boy would be out there in the field traveling and shit, you know, going to NYG and shit like that. You know, I'd be doing that shit. But like right now, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, even though they got events out here, offline events, it, it's it ain't all that deep right now. So uh, like I said, hopefully in the future, probably sometime around 2023, we'll see. You know, NYG or some shit open back up. We'll see maybe to see Defend the North, maybe Combo Breaker or come back because, you know, I, I, I'm right where Combo Breaker is or was, I guess you could say. You know, hopefully Combo Breaker will come back probably in the next year, year and a half, maybe two years. So but right now, yeah, it, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, shout out to everybody that went to Frosty Frostings. Uh, I was planning on going to Frosty Frostings, but we got hit with snow, so I was just like, ah, you know, ain't really worth it. Go ahead and just, I just, you know, parked my brakes. So, uh, I decided not to go to Frosty Frostings, but, uh, shout out to the people that went. But like I said, you know, it's just going to be one of those things right now. If, if, if there, if this whole COVID thing did not happen, your boy would be out there traveling and going to events and shit like that probably not as much as i used to but i'll be doing it but uh yeah but you know it's gonna clear up soon it's gonna clear up soon so uh yeah i wanted to talk about that and like i said before man this has been an episode the first episode of your boy d all the way g aka c money talking that shit so uh let me know what y'all think in the comment section below about the first episode of Talking Shit. And uh, I'll get back to y'all in the next video. So uh, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. Because I'm going to come back at you with some more classic ass shit. So uh, holla back.